Hey gang, this is part two of the 12 volt battery auto charging project. So I just want to remind everyone to please uh, like and subscribe so we can get up to enough uh, subscribers to make this worthwhile. So in the previous video, we used a servo motor to push the lock button sw switch to activate the internal 12 volt battery charging of the vehicle. But uh, this time we're going to see if we can get a, you know, a wired signal directly from the switch. So I actually ordered a switch so we could take it apart and take a look at the inner workings and see if we could hack into it and uh, inject a signal into it. It is a digital switch. It doesn't actually run the high power 12 volt through that switch, but it runs a control signal back to the body domain controller. As you can see, it looks like the, the buttons push. Uh, there's carbon buttons that push the... Uh, contacts and it's uh, got a resistor network inside of it as well and a couple LEDs. So in order to uh, emulate this we're going to have to figure out what type of signal the body domain controller needs in order to uh, trigger it. So this is a 9 volt battery through a voltage divider to get to about four and a half volts and it just is not very bright. So here's the brightness at uh, the full 9 volts so based on this, it looks to me like it's uh, <clears throat> most likely running 12 volts into the uh, LED circuit into the switch. So here's a quick overview of the switch design. So this is from the back side, looking at the pins, the uh, four pins that are sticking out that would connect into the lines that's going back to the uh, body domain controller. So it looks like Pin 4 is actually not connected. Uh, pin 2 uh, goes through resistors, through the LEDs, and then to pin 1. So it looks like pin 1 is likely the ground connection. And pin 2 is the power uh, feed that uh, lights up both LEDs. I notice the resistors are slightly different values, so I'm not sure if that's to have one a little bit more bright than the other one, but you know, they're they're close either way. It just uh, the lock is slightly brighter than the unlock based on the resistor settings. Uh, looks like pin three is the signal line. Uh, it goes through um, roughly a one k ohm resistor, and then to the lock buttons, of which there's two carbon buttons that touch the circuit board. Very similar to a video game. Uh, joystick controller. Uh, also, the line goes down through another 1.25k ohm resistor to the uh, switch 3 and switch 4, which is the unlock buttons in pairs. So both both of the uh, contact switches are paired up, uh, probably for redundancy. And if nothing is pressed, there's a, the signal line goes through the 1k ohm resistor, the 1.25k ohm resistor, another 2.32. So in the non-actuated state, it's about a four and a half thousand ohm resistance, 4.5k 4 ohm resistance from the signal line to ground. So it looks like the uh, it's a digital switch. It doesn't actually route 12 power through 12 volts through directly to run the uh, lock mechanism. It's a digital control uh, switch, and it goes from probably a high state of some high voltage state, probably 5 volts or so. Could be 12, I'm not sure. And then it is pulled down to a lower level, depending if switch the lock switch is pushed, it's pulling it down through the 1K ohm resistor. If the unlock switch is pushed, it's pulling it down through uh, basically two and a quarter ohms resistance. So you have a high state with nothing being pressed, a medium voltage state with the unlock buttons being pushed, and a lower voltage state when the lock button is being pushed. Uh, it looks like that's how this switch actually functions. So here's a schematic that I found for this switch mechanism for the door lock, and it looks like it it mimics what we were finding from the diagnosis of the switch pretty well. So it's throwing, it's showing three inputs with uh, brown, looks like pin number one, which is the ground, uh, pin number three, the input to the lock mechanism, and pin number two, 
the input to the switch lights and that's pretty much what we found so I'm pretty confident we've got the wiring down correctly for the switch itself now for the body domain controller side it looks like the brown which would be ground and yellow uh, which would be the pin 3 is uh, going through another connector which I think is from the door into the side of the car there's another connector there and then into the body domain controller um, as you can see though there's many many pins that go into the body domain controller so whether we can get into that successfully we'll have to see so this is down in the passenger footwell and I just wanted to show uh, where you would tap in to the body domain controller and this is what it is back in here fuse box is up above here uh, <clears throat> this is the side panel uh, I pulled this panel off I pulled the glove box out from the top and uh, it's really difficult to get access to these connectors when they have multiple bundles of wires and it's really uh, not clear which bundle is the one that we're looking for that's coming from the door to tap into and uh, because of that, um, I don't know if there's, if there's enough discrimination to be able to tell which is the exact wire that we need to pull uh, to tap into for the door lock signal. So I think after scratching my head and looking at this uh, for quite a while, that um, the best approach might be to go back to the door panel itself and just pull the signal right off the switch and tap into it there. So we know we know which wire it is, we know what signal to expect, and we're not uh, messing around with these connectors here that uh, uh, could probably make a mess. There's uh, the, the, not just these two here, there's uh, a bunch above where we can't even see. And the wire bundles are of course wrapped as well, so it's uh, difficult to get to those wires except right at the uh, body domain controller itself. So let's not do that. And I'm going to go back to the door and just pull the line from the door and come back this way. To get the door cover off, you've got to work the uh, tool around in this area and start to pop off the con connectors to separate this off. So I don't think I can do this with one hand. So I'll come back and uh, show you what it looks like after I pop it off. Okay, we've got the uh, door panel loose. I guess we have to pry these connectors um, off the door. It's a little bit tight, but it's not impossible to do. And now we have access to the plug here for the lock mechanism right here. So it looks like it's the easiest way to get access to this. Uh, again, I pulled the glove box and then underneath the uh, passenger side door to get access to it and I could not really get access to it. So we'll go ahead and we'll splice into this and put a jumper wire and then see if that does the trick. So on the door switch itself, the lock switch, I had to take on the yellow wire, I had to strip off a little bit of the insulation because it didn't actually make contact after I connected the wire and uh, put everything back together. So just be aware that uh, maybe check that the uh, wire is actually uh, making good contact with the uh, tap connector.